John Dorsey is no stranger to mixed opinions. There are people in Kansas City who think that he did an amazing dra job drafting Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill in the core of that team, Travis Kelsey. Um, there are also people in Kansas City that think that a lot of the baggage that came with him and a lot of baggage that came with the players that came with him kind of dragged their team down and they had to be uplifted by Andy Reid after he was fired. And, you know, the fact is, is that the Chiefs did win the Super Bowl after John Dorsey was fired. And then there are people in Cleveland, people who swear by him and people who swear that he was the problem. But is that the reality of the situation? So what I'm gonna do is do a deep dive of John Dorsey's career and grade John Dorsey. All right, so let's start with 2013. And like every year, there's gonna be some good and some bad. And the good is Alex Smith. This trade, was really, really good for the Kansas City Chiefs. Alex Smith played for the Kansas City Chiefs for five seasons, all winning above 500 seasons. He had a career record in Kansas City of 50 and 26. Um, he threw for over 17,000 yards. He had 102 touchdowns, only 33 interceptions, and had a 65% completion percentage and a 94.8% passer rating for a second round pick that's pretty good uh, Alex Smith had five very good years um, in Kansas City and ultimately those would turn out to be the five best years of his career because we all know once he got traded to Washington he got injured um, and his career was over another gem that they landed in the 2013 offseason was Travis Kelsey so this was a very good start for John Dorsey no doubt now, were there some bad? Yes. Now, in the 2013 draft, the Kansas City Chiefs also had the first overall pick. Um, and since they had the first overall pick in 2013, there weren't a lot of good options. Um, and they drafted Eric Fisher. And Eric Fisher's offensive tackle, and he's, he, he's all right. He's not great, but he's not what you would expect from a number one overall pick um, at offensive tackle. Now, again, the 2013 draft was bad. It's the year the Browns drafted Barkevius Mingo. Um, and you got to give John Dorsey just a little bit of credit here with the pick because the consensus guy that year was Luke Jokel from Texas A&M, who turned out to be an even bigger bust than you could ever consider Eric Fisher. But, but, but if we're going to play that game, um, Lane Johnson was also available, has turned out to be a fantastic offensive tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now let's jump to 2014, and again, D. Ford, excellent pick, kind of. He's up and down. He's known for a bad offsides penalty, but he had two double-digit sack in TFL seasons. Um, in those seasons where he was healthy and playing at an elite level, he was dominant. Now they ended up trading him, but that was after John Dorsey, so that was a good thing. Also, they got Zach Fulton and um, Laurent Duvernay Tardif in the sixth round, two starters in the sixth round. You always got to applaud that when it happens now. But some of the bad in 2014, well, it's some of what happened after and before Zach Fulton um, in that draft, and that is Aaron Murray. Aaron Murray is not in the NFL anymore. Um, he wasn't really expected to be that good, but he was expected to be better than that. Philip Gaines, third round pick, kind of turned into a marginal player. DeAnthony Thomas, same deal, um, turned into a marginal player, never really lived up to the expectations that the team had for him. So 2014 was a pretty decent year for John Dorsey. You know, not everything was great, but not everything was bad. And, you know, they did, I think, do more good than bad in 2014. Now 2015 is another interesting year. They drafted Marcus Peters. They drafted Steven Wilson, Nelson. They drafted Rameek Wilson. All three solid starters in the NFL um, all got contracts for good money elsewhere um, or with the Chiefs. And, you know, it's a good draft. It is a good draft. But they also, in all season, traded a fifth-round pick for Ben Grubbs, who was done by that point of his career. Chris Connolly, who a lot of people had a lot of hopes for at the wide receiver position, never panned out to be a consistent, um, productive wide receiver for the Chiefs. And they signed Jeremy Macklin, which turned out to not be worth it. They gave him a five-year, $55 million contract, and they only got two seasons from him, one 
average season and then another just injury-ridden kind of thrown-out season. So I would say it's a solid qualifier for a waste of five years, $55 million. Um, so all in all, kind of a meh year. Not a great year um, because you didn't end up keeping the top two players from there in the secondary, um, Marcus Peters and Steven Nelson. Those two have played elsewhere now um, and have helped other secondaries tremendously in the AFC North. Uh, but they didn't stay, you know, in Kansas City. And Kansas City's biggest Achilles heel has been their secondary um, for a few years now. So, um, so you know, kind of the good and the bad of that situation. Now we go to 2016, and he had a good year in 2016. Signed Mitchell Schwartz, signed, drafted Chris Jones, um, drafted Tyree Kill in like the sixth round or whenever he got him. So that was pretty good. Pretty good. Those two players, really good. You can't deny that. And Tyreek Hill being as good as he is kind of outdoes the bad of that draft. And the bad of that draft is significant because they had nine picks, no first-round picks, but they had nine picks that year. They only had two good players. Um, Eric Murray is one of those guys that they drafted early that never panned out to Marcus Robinson, you know, never became more than just a um, – here and there kind of producer in the, in the receiving game. Kevin Hogan never really even made the team. So, you know, again, good, bad, not awful. John Dorsey doesn't really do awful off seasons. He gives you some good and he gives you some bad and the degrees of both is what you have to watch out for. Now, 2017, his last year with the Kansas City Chiefs, I would argue is his best year in the draft because he drafted Patrick Mahomes and Kareem Hunt. And there's no bad when you draft those two. That is that is the jackpot. You have drafted a very good running back and one of the best quarterbacks of a generation. Um, I can't even, there's no negatives to that. So that's a very good job by John Dorsey. Um, and then there was a power struggle with Andy Reid, reportedly, um, that left John Dorsey on the street after that draft, kind of inexplicably. And the Browns quickly swooped him up. And... John Dorsey continued to have some very, very good streaks and some moves when he came to Cleveland because he completely overhauled the roster. Now, let me tell you just a few of the names that the Browns brought in that offseason that really did make a difference in that season. Jarvis Landry, the trade for him, huge, tremendous. Terrence Mitchell, huge, tremendous. Um, Darren Fells. Pretty good. I missed him not being on the team this year. Chris Smith, again, was a good contributor off the bench behind Miles Garrett. Um, TJ Carey, he, he, that first year in Cleveland, he was a lot more significant than people give him credit for. Um, Demarius Randall, very significant in that first year in Cleveland. Carlos Hyde, very significant until he got traded, but he's still playing well for the Texans. Um, and then in the draft, we have Baker Mayfield, Denzel Ward, and Nick Chubb. Whew. That is an offseason. That's a really good offseason. And it's almost, it's hard to poke holes in that offseason. But you have to poke holes or else you're not being fair to everybody involved. And there were some massive holes in this offseason that would get revealed as time went on, and that was Tyrod Taylor, the trade for Tyrod Taylor. He only started two games, so the Browns traded for a player that they barely used. Um, and honestly, in that kind of a role, when you knew you were going to draft Baker Mayfield, it didn't make sense to get somebody with as much upside as Tyrod Taylor. Maybe they should have gone somewhere with the established veteran route, or even Josh McCown at that point, but they traded for Tyrod Taylor. I didn't think that was a great move, um, but I also think that was made to kind of appease Hugh Jackson at the time. Um, but I think one of the bigger misses here, and I think the misses that are going to define John Dorsey and his era in Cleveland were the misses along the defensive and offensive lines. Um, and he had one of his biggest misses on the offensive line in Austin Corbett, drafted the first pick of the second round. That is a significant pick. Before Nick Chubb, they drafted Austin Corbett, and he amounted to absolutely nothing in Cleveland, never I don't think he ever really played a starting snap in Cleveland um, before he was traded to the Rams. And then you have Antonio Callaway, wide receiver, who also amounted to very little in Cleveland. Had some moments here and there, but 
could never consistently get his act together. And once the team traded for Odell Beckham in the following offseason, which we'll get to, um, it, it seemed like the wheels completely fell off of Antonio Callaway for whatever reason. Um, so, again, you had some huge hits and some small hits there. You know, Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, Denzel Ward. That's going to be the core that's going to define this team for next decade, hopefully. Um, Jarvis Landry is also a big contributing piece to that. But then, you know, you look down and you see the Tyrod Taylor trade kind of useless. Um, Austin Corbett, big miss. Antonio Callaway, uh, kind of a pointless miss because you didn't even need him at that point And you made him obsolete in the immediate offseason after that. Speaking of the immediate offseason after that, let's jump to 2019. And 2019 is kind of what most people will remember John Dorsey as who don't have a favorable opinion of John Dorsey. And that is the flash over function of this offseason a lot of flash on this offseason a lot of good headlines came from this offseason i mean a lot of hype came from this offseason but ultimately the good that came from this offseason the positive things that came from this offseason was the obj trade which i still think was good um and mac wilson and maybe greedy williams being drafted all that hype all that noise kind of amounted to you know two good players uh, one if he gets healthy and the other one if he continues to develop and then Greedy Williams. Again, you know, a lot of noise went into that and that was positive. But then if we look at the bad things, the things that didn't pan out, some of the louder things. Trading Zeitler for Vernon. That ended up being a terrible deal. Vernon did not produce more than Emmanuel Agba did in Kansas City and the Browns were paying 15 million more dollars for that lack of production um, and they traded their best offensive lineman for him. Uh, Kevin Zeitler was a force at right guard. They no longer had him and it showed and it hurt the Browns this season not having him on the offensive line. Um, you also have Emmanuel Agba being traded. Now, I understand you're bringing Vernon. You want to clear up a spot for, for Vernon? Sure. But trading Emmanuel Agba made little sense to me. He's versatile. He can play inside and outside. He could have helped this defensive line. And, you know, Miles Garrett and Olivier Vernon both have injury histories that needed to be worried about. They've both missed significant portions of a season due to injury. So it made no sense to me getting rid of Emmanuel Agba um, leaving this defensive end room with no depth if there were any injuries in there. And what happened? They had no depth. They were having Sheldon Richardson line up at defensive end at the end of the season opposite of Chad Thomas because John Dorsey traded away to death. Also, Jannard Avery. What the hell happened to Jannard Avery? What the hell happened to Rashard Higgins? What happened to David Njoku? The mysteries of 2019 in the roster. These guys just disappeared. It seemed like because there was a war between the coaching staff and, and Paul De Podesta. And that brings me to the biggest miss of all. Because if Zeitler wasn't a big miss for you, if Emmanuel Agba was a little bit of a miss, um, Jannard Avery, Rashard Higgins, those are little misses. But, you know, Zeitler for Vernon, huge miss right there. Huge miss. The biggest miss, and this might be the biggest miss in franchise history, is hiring Freddie Kitchens. Because Freddie Kitchens took a roster that looked very good and turned it all into poop. It was bad. Um, the play calling, bad. The relationship with the offensive coordinator, Todd Monken, that John Dorsey brought in, bad. The coaching staff that surrounded Freddie Kitchens, brought in by John Dorsey, bad. Everything surrounding Steve Wilkes, the defensive coordinator, brought in by Fred, brought in by John Dorsey. Bad, a lot of bad, a whole lot of bad surrounded Freddie Kitchens. No bad play design, bad play calling, bad protection schemes, just bad development of a quarterback. Bad, bad. Everything that surrounded Freddie Kitchens was awful, and it made everything else awful. Who was the person that banged the table for Freddie Kitchens? John Dorsey. That is John Dorsey's biggest miss. As much as he should be remembered for being the guy who pulled the trigger on Patrick Mahomes, him being fired from Kansas City, and then subsequently coming here, drafting Baker Mayfield, which I think will turn out to be a great decision, but hiring Freddie Kitchens, I don't know. It seems like it's going to be a footnote that's going to be there for John Dorsey's entire career. So looking at his whole career and seeing the good and the bad, 
the the high value picks and then the low value picks and you start to notice a trend there you know it, you notice that he's a lot better at drafting skill players than he is at drafting linesmen offensive and defensive and you look at the browns offensive defensive line you can see the players that are good on it um you know you got jc treader not brought in by dorsey joe batonio nothing to do with dorsey um uh, they got rid of zeitler that was a Dorsey decision. They brought in Olivier Vernon, who was, again, less productive than Emmanuel Agba, who most people consider a scrub. Um, you know, that was a bad decision. They brought in Sheldon Richardson, who had an all right year, but not a great year. And look, I'm not trying to be negative on John Dorsey. I think there are some obvious positives to him. He brought in skill talent um, very easily. Wide receivers, quarterbacks, um, you know, defensive backs. He can do those things so easily. Linebackers. Um, I think he even played linebacker himself. He's really good at that. And that's really hard to be good at. And he doesn't give you terrible off seasons, but he gives you really good choices and really bad choices. And sometimes that balance can be thrown off. And in 2019, that balance was thrown off because where was John Dorsey the worst at this off season? Offensive and defensive line and head coach. What killed the Browns' chances of being competitive this season? Offensive and defensive line, head coach. That's all on John Dorsey. So, you know, if you're going to give him the points for the good stuff, the Patrick Mahomes, the, the Baker Mayfield, the 2018 draft, you know, you have to give him the points for the bad stuff, which is 2019. 2019 was bad for John Dorsey, and he made some of the worst decisions in his career when he had the most power he had in his career. Um, that's not something to be ignored. So all that put together, you can't say that John Dorsey is a bad GM. There's absolutely no way you could talk about football and be credible and say that John Dorsey is a bad GM. You can't even say he's an average GM. He is a clearly above average GM at finding player personnel more specifically off ball personnel he's very good at that you cannot deny him that um, and since he's so good at that I think John Dorsey his final grade for his entire career so far is a B minus some very good things some very bad things but I think ultimately he did so much very good that the very bad is outweighed a little bit um, so B minus. I think he's an above average GM. I think he's probably going to get another job somewhere else. And I think he should probably somewhere that's talent deprived. Um, and he'll be able to boost him up. Now, if he would be able to stay there more than two or three years, we'll see. That's the next test for John Dorsey, because in order to do that, he's got to get better at drafting along the lines of scrimmage. But that's my thought about John Dorsey. Um, let me know your thoughts about John Dorsey in a job that he did. What would you give John Dorsey's grade um, for his two and a half years in Cleveland? Do you think he's a B minus guy like I think he is? Or do you think he's an A plus or F minus? Let me know in the comment section down below. But again, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Have a good night.